Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Three Strands pod. How are you guys feeling? I hope you are feeling as fantastic as the weather is. Although the weather's kind of shady because it really be sunny but it's not warm. So I hope you guys are actually feeling better than the weather is. Have you been out in the sun? Have you guys been to the pub? Have you guys been shopping? Because you know the shops are open now. So how y'all feel? How you feel? How you feel? How you feel? 25 sitting on 25 mil. I declare in Jesus name. Amen. It is week four of Jazz Appreciation Month and Stress Awareness Month. How have you guys been doing in terms of keeping your stress awareness up and your stress levels down? And how have you guys been enjoying the jazz? Have you been enjoying it? Let me know. I want to know. Can you show me? I want to know about the stress awareness. This week's song suggestion is Change of the Guard by Kamasi Washington. And it gets a little something like this. And this week's stress reduction action is to plan your week from Monday to Sunday, from the a.m. to the p.m. Plan it all out. Get a piece of paper or do it digitally in your iPad, on your phone, on your laptop. However you want to do it, just plan your week. Make sure you schedule some relaxation time. And with this week's suggestions out of the way, I think the time has come to make a deal. What a deal. So without further ado, oh, 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 I said without further ado, oh, 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 cue the intro. After the interview with Oprah, Meghan and Harry and the comment concerning the colour of baby Archie's skin, the UK, alongside the royal family, have been working over time to convince the public that they are not racist. So I thought it would be so fun to go through all of the different things that the royal family and the UK have done to prove that they are not racist and let you guys decide whether or not this is a racist piece of land. Okay, but don't don't just don't just make a decision now and say no, they're not racist or yes, they are racist. Let me present the facts and figures to you so that you can make an informed choice because that's what it's all about being informed on the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth nothing but the truth nothing but the truth like i said before all of this information has come out after the interview with oprah megan and harry aired and so the royal family were considering whether they should appoint a person to oversee the diversity issues And they said that they were doing background work, which had actually begun before the interview aired. And they are continuing the process in order to ensure that what happened before doesn't happen again. And so that they can push the narrative that they, the royal family, aren't racists. The Telegraph, which is a British newspaper, shared a story in the hopes of dispelling the rumours that the UK is racist. And so the news report was titled, Shayi Obakin has known Prince William for more than 10 years and once slept rough with him. He speaks on their enduring friendship. That sounds so beautiful. Not. When I saw that, I was quite confused because I was like, hmm, what is this title suggesting? That Prince William slept rough with his friend Shayi Obakin or Shayi Obakin slept rough with Prince William, who is a prince and has a good house and could probably give him a bed for a night i was thinking what the hell does this mean what kind of what are you trying to push here because (laughs) baby i just don't get it 
upon actually reading the article, it turns out that Shay Obakin is the chief executive of Centrepoint, which is a charity that supports homeless young people. And so Prince Harry and Prince William were taken to visit the Centrepoint hostels by their mother, Princess Diana, years and years back as children. And then William actually took over as the charity's patron from his mother 16 years ago. And Prince William said that he wanted to do more for the homeless, to mark the 40th birthday of Centrepoint in 2019. And so Obakin actually invited William to sleep rough for a night on the street. And so that was the story. And so I was like, oh, okay. The title of this report was a little bit misleading, but I get it now. And I was like, okay, I get that Prince William slept rough for that one night in order to do more for the cause and to help the homeless people. But if this is the UK's way of proving that they are not racist, then this doesn't count. What what the hell is that? What are we, what are we supposed to take away from this? That what Prince William does charity work? Okay, but we already know that. It this just feels like a, hey, look at me. I'm Prince William. I'm not from a racist family. The country isn't racist, and I have a black friend who I once slept rough with ten years ago. I just think this whole Prince William slept rough for one night thing is just crazy. Because what has he done to dispel the myths that the country isn't racist since this one night in two thousand nine? What has he done? William, what have you done? What was more interesting to me is that they had this information and had access to it, but but only chose to use this to protect his image instead of protecting his sister-in-law when she was receiving some crazy attention, not good attention, from the damaging press. When every other newspaper was writing hurtful and disgusting things about Meghan Markle, nobody wanted to say anything. But now that it's come out that somebody in the royal family has something to say concerning the colour of baby Archie's skin, Prince William is here doing PR talking about, I slept rough with my mate 10 years back. Okay, William. (laughs) Nobody asked, but okay. (laughs) You know them we there. So the Telegraph actually tweeted the link to that particular news report and people on Twitter were loving it. Oh my gosh, they were loving it. People were saying things like, so it was Prince William who was concerned with Archie's skin. People were saying, Harry doesn't have to tell us who it was. William's here out in himself. People were saying, whatever they're saying William did, he did that. On top of this hilarious story about the one time Prince William slept on the road with his friend, there is a link to a tweet showing images of members of the royal family standing with unidentified black people after the interview aired in the hopes of what, convincing us that they are not racist or whatever agenda they're trying to push. I hope it humours you as much as it humoured me. I shall leave it in the description, so be sure to check it out. So not only were the royal family trying to show that they are not racist, but in acknowledgement of St. Patrick's Day, which is a cultural and religious tradition for the patron saint of Ireland, William stood with his wife in a six second video where he was speaking Gaelic. Now, the irony of that six-second video is that the royal family made it illegal for Irish people to speak their mother tongue, and it is now a dying language. The same thing actually happened in Wales. A little more irony for you is that Prince Charles was made the Prince of Wales. It's not confusing because this isn't a racist country and the royal family isn't racist, so if you're sitting there confused... (sighs) I don't know what to tell you, because this is definitely not a racist country. The royal family are the furthest from... I mean, they stand with black people. Like, literally stand with them. Like, there was a woman, and then there was a child, and there was some other woman, and a guy that Prince William once let profit. I mean, look at that. What racist do you know that stands with black people? Former Brexit party leader... Nigel Farage says that the British royal family have done more for people of colour than anyone else in history. Moving from the royal family and to the UK now, the Welsh government are now including black history into their new curriculum bill. This will include, quote, explicit references to black and minority ethnic history, diversity and identity. The former national curriculum had been in place in England and Wales since 1988. 
that is a very long time and it's only now that they are including black history into the curriculum so think about all the things that they have missed out all of the people that have been in the education system that didn't learn accurate parts of the history of black people of the uk they just didn't learn it or they just skipped out parts and just thought this isn't appropriate for children to learn or whatever but they thought it was appropriate for people to do but we don't have to get into that because we ain't gonna get into it people on social media were saying that it's actually up to the parents to teach their children the history some believe that it's good that black history is now being included in the curriculum so what do you guys think do you think that black history as raw and as honest should not be included in the curriculum and that it should be up to parents to teach their children as much or as little as they want or should there be black history aspects of it or the whole thing whatever included in the curriculum so that children can learn about it learn about the same thing at the same time and you know interact with each other and have these conversations with other students or whatever how do you guys feel should parents teach their kids or should we leave it to the schools because all i'm saying is 1988 is a long time to be teaching one way that is a lot of people who didn't learn about black history Next, we are talking about how London, in particular, profited from slavery. Now, when I researched this, oh my days, <laughs> I was so confused. But you know the kind of confusion when it's like, do you know what, I'm not even surprised. It's just disappointed, but not surprised, confused. I was there. So between 1807, which was the year of the abolition of British slave trade, and 1833, the end of British colonial slavery, approximately 11 million Africans were victims in the transatlantic slave trade. Now, what is surprising to me is that this 11 million doesn't even include the amount of people who died on their own land, were killed in transit, or were enslaved on their own land. That is 11 million, that's just those that made it across. There are so many other people, numbers not accounted for, that are missed out within this figure. And even after slavery was abolished, there were and are still lasting social, financial and cultural effects. Now here comes the fun part. In 2015, British taxpayers finished, quote, paying off the debt they incurred to compensate British slave owners in 18. 35. Did you mind hear what I said? <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I'm not even going to repeat it. You just have to take it back and listen to it again if you missed it. That loan is one of the largest loans in history. Deep the years 1835 to 2015. The British government borrowed £20 million, which today is about £16 billion, to compensate slave owners for losing slave labour. Are you skunked in your brain? Are you... No, look at yourself in the mirror and ask, am I skunked inside my brain? I must be absolutely skunked off. Compensate slave owners. This country's sick. They're actually sick. No, you know when you deep that someone is wicked, yeah? Nah, this is not even wicked. This is just... <laughs> this wicked is a different kind of wicked. The wicked that this... Oh, they have the cheek to call this land united. Just take a second and deep something with me. The compensation for the slave owners, paired with the profits made from slavery, solidified the wealth of the upper middle and upper class elite. It's so crazy and I read that eight to ten generations later, Britons are enjoying the fortunes created by slavery. Eight to ten generations. Brother, that's, nah. The wickedness, yeah, you see? <laughs> oh, when I'm through, it's you. Nah, that's just, it's too much. Now, I've seen wickedness, yeah, but this kind of wickedness, wickedness is it out of the water, mate. Here is another fun fact for you. Former Prime Minister David Cameron's family 
are a part of the list of the big names that actually benefited from that compensation. How nice. Isn't that wonderful? That David Cameron's family, our, one of our prime ministers, was a direct beneficiary of the compensation given to slave owners after losing slave labour. Wow. Beautiful. We love to see it. No, we do. We do. But the UK is not racist, so don't complain. I just think that it's crazy that British society are comfortable with the idea of slave owners deserving compensation for losing slave labour. But when it concerns the actual enslaved people receiving reparations and compensation, suddenly the whole conversation becomes controversial. The British government felt that they had a responsibility to slave owners and so they spent 180 years repaying this loan. So at what point exactly does the responsibility kick in for those who were enslaved and how long does that last? Do the ancestors, 8 to 10 generations of enslaved people, get 180 years worth of loan? Do we, do we get that? Reparations, compensation anything at all discount codes no okay another fun fact that i learned is that east london's docklands was built in part to trade slave harvested goods from the caribbean and so the west india docks in london was not only funded in part by slavery profits but was actually designed to enhance profits made by making the import of slave-grown goods more efficient. A man named Robert Milligan was a driving force behind the construction of the dock. Upon his death in 1809, he owned 526 enslaved Africans who were forced to work on his family's plantation in Jamaica. A statue was erected in his honour at the West India Dock, and it actually stood in front of the Museum of London Docklands, which is a converted warehouse that used to store slave-harvested sugar. His statue was removed to, quote, recognise the wishes of the community after statues of slave owners were being destroyed across the country last year. So, you can decide. Are they racist? Are they not? I've given you the facts and figures. The answer to the question is yours to decide. The UK, racist. Yay or nay? The British royal family, racist. Yay or nay? If you do find any information, facts, figures to support your claims as to whether or not the UK slash the British royal family are racist, please be sure to let me know because I am very interested to see what you guys find and what you guys think. As always, links are in the description if you want to read anything that I have referenced. Be sure to look down there. Until next time, peace in the Middle East to you and your crew. What, what? Peace in the Middle East to you and your crew. Something years of age and life surely ain't about handouts. So I lays my plan out. Hard work is living data to an hardcore survival. Consider John's lesson from conception to arrival. Now that I'm here, my fear shall decrease. Learn about life, making my way to the east. From four square yard struggle up the G's on time. Your God hit me with yeah, that. Yeah. Producing.